Good evening, everybody. Hello. 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 Rebecca Davies, and I'm pretending to uh, represent Plymouth University, which I'm a student for private practice at. But they're not, they're not funding me for this, so I think that, uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't mention them. Hey, yo. This side? Yep. Ah. Oh, it's when these newfangled things that you touch. Ah, that, that's it. So, you see, I'm representing University of Plymouth and the Nuclear Old Cornwall Society, which is an archive. They've got lots of surfing and surfing art stuff, so, you know, big influence on me. I thought, coming to Wales, I thought I'd wear my rugby shirt. <laughs> it's from Wide Eastwood, which is allegedly not on the Isle of Wight, but it sounds like it ought to be, but that's by the by. As I said, I brought a board and a bodyboard, and everybody's looking strange at me for bringing a surfboard to Cardiff, and I thought, well, you never know, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, never, I've never been to Cardiff before. I, I, I've been to Newport, but you know, you know, you've always got to, you know, you know surfing on the seven bore, which is going to be mentioned later on. Anyway, let's get started. This is about the history of surfing, just a little. We've got this here picture here, which dates from the 1920s. That's from New King Archive. And uh, her on the left has got what's called a coffin lid. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm afraid as a scholar, I can't tell you if she's actually surfing on the, the top part of the coffin. But a lot of the times back then, if they wanted the board to surf on, they, they did go to the local coffin maker. They'd have something made about. But her in the middle, She's got a, a body board of ply, like shaped like I have. Better for belly boarding, you don't stand on them, you lay on your belly, knee or in the in the Hawaiians they call them papio boards, I believe. I don't think I am not good pronouncing stuff. Anyway, so this history of surfing in Great Britain without any jargon. Surfing's something with lots of jargon, so but we're gonna dispense with that. Because I, I know you're a great academic, you don't understand jargon, do you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a premier modern day Celtic sport and can be seen an important part of Cornish heritage. Newquay is the surfing capital of this country. It was chosen so by Australian troops in the war. And that's where my title quote comes from. So that, that explains my rather glib title. So with, uh, you know, Next thing. The uh, surfing, as you probably know, was invented in Hawaii. It was first popularized by the American author Jack London in his book, The Cruise of the Snark, which is a yachting classic, I believe. And he encountered surfing on what, Waikiki Beach? Can anyone pronounce this kind of stuff? <laughs> I know I can't. There's some place in Hawaii in the, in the 1908, which was coincidentally the date of the first surfing club set, set up in the world, in, in Hawaii, I don't think on that beach. And the, initially, as surprised and alarmed at the idea of taking on the huge Hawaiian bit, bit breakers, he soon got hold of the board and learned how to do it himself. He called it the sport of kings, and he, he was very poetic about it. So, He's, uh, he first promoted it, and people, the idea got around. So it, uh, this is a great western poster, New Key on the Cornish coast. It's quite hard to find because you have to go up a branch line, but there's a station there, and mercifully there's a station there still. So this is a great western post, but uh, well, you're going to see several of these in this book, but there's, there's lots in the archive. So, there's a, you know, ladies belly boarding and getting some work, presumably. <laughs> I don't like that bit. And uh, they would have used the ply board, like, like I, I made that board, but you, you can buy them. They start at about 50 pounds. I thought, you know, plywood, simple geometric shape. I think I can do that, <laughs> you know. But, uh, you know, people in this country had served in Hawaii. There's Prince Edward, who became that guy who abdicated, and Agatha Christie, 
they were probably amongst the first Britons to actually physically stand on a board. And, uh, but mostly in this era, it was belly boarding, you know, lying prone. It's still done to this day. It has a quite following. It's something you can do without any balance, and you don't need vast amounts of surf, and you, you don't need a huge weight board like my board there, which I'll probably introduce later. So it's um, <coughs> the first person to stand on the board in Britain was an unknown date around the middle 1930s. His name was Jimmy Dix. And after writing to the Galpin Rig Canoe Club, which was that one I said was set up in 1908, he received a reply attached to a surfboard. <laughs> they were very generous back then, I think. <laughs> that's, uh, that's from that, uh, the Surfing Tribe book, which is being handed around, or somebody nicked it. <laughs> they haven't. <laughs> all right, you, you've all seen, hopefully you've all seen it by now. I want that back, you know. <laughs> and that carrier bag. You know how much carrier bags cost these days? <laughs> a big investment there. So, so <coughs> this is a scene from Newquay. It's a big wave, uh, famously called the Pribar. It's, uh, it forms under certain sea and wind conditions off the Talon Head, which is one of the headlands of Newquay, and might be 20 feet, probably. I've had you measure a wave, you know. <laughs> I have to ask them with my oceanographer friends in Plymouth Uni about that. It was, um, you know, surfed by the big surfers in, in the 60s, and it's kind of forgotten about today, but it's, uh, these big waves <coughs> are coming back into fashion. Somebody will do it again. That's from uh, the other reference of mine, You Should Have Been Here Yesterday, which is a book I haven't got a copy of. <laughs> but I said it's uh, they got a copy of Newquay Museum, so if you want to see it, I'll where it is. Uh, carry on. So I made a map, I did all this map myself, hence the pretty colours. I mean, not the outline, but I, I coloured it in. <laughs> so we have a, a surfing map of Great Britain. Can you, can you see this good? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Right. So as you see, there's. Uh, you know, a lot of it is the southwest, but there's also one in the south. Guernsey and Jersey are famous for surfing, and also Tyneside and uh, up in the Scotland way. There's several spots in Wales. We have Anglesey, the Lynn Peninsula, Pembrokeshire. I remember when I went down to Pembrokeshire, there's a, it's like Cornwall down there. And then there's the Gower, of course, the Gower's famous, and Porth Cor. I didn't quite get in on the map. And of course, there's seven more. So you see, there's, you might find surfing in that. So it's, uh, there's also a lot of surfing in Ireland, but I kind of ran out of room, room on the map. <laughs> so it's, uh, that's uh, my next spot. The, the Great Western Railway Coasters. Mid-century from the branch line, Newquay, Cornwall's finest Atlantic resort. Now, how do you quantify stuff like that? All these resorts have different charms. Newquay's pretty good. I like that, but and I, I, live, I live close to Newquay, so I'm, I'm biased. Mm -hmm. So, a great western railway coaster from surfing scenes part of the listing in the southwest, sunny days, Cornish fishing visit, villages, Torbay Palms. This, uh, this poster is from 1937, and um, we see women surfing a lot. Women have always surfed, but they just might not have made it to a bit in the movies. But no, there, there have been to this day and far in the past, this is like Agatha Christie, you know, women have always been involved in surfing. <coughs> so it's, uh, where are we next? So let's carry on. There's the, here we are. I said the Mindo jargon. I, I like the shaper. But that's easy to understand. The shaper is the guy who makes surfboards. And so it's, um, it's a 
part of uh, great mysticism. I've tried to get several people to explain to me how a board was made, and they, they sadly trade secrets. But most modern boards are made out of foam and fiberglass. Some people are going back to wood and other renewal bowls. Most of them are sort of one-man shows, like you see here, and it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a black art. <laughs> <coughs> so it's, it's like a good connection. Surfing and heritage. Here is a, it's a postcard actually, a postcard from 1948. Again, we see people with loose belly boards off of. That headland there with the big hotel on the top, that's Tower Head. So that's, uh, this is where the main, there's several beaches in the UK if you've ever been. It all seems to mean that beaches, headland, beaches, headland. It's a bit like Porth Call. Any of you have not ever been to Porth Call? Mm -hmm. Where well, you see that sort of beaches and bays and, mm -hmm. you know, stuff in between sort of arrangement. Yuki's, oh, and of course it's actually different to Porth Call, but it's a, a similar sort of feeling. So that's uh, that's an old postcard that I, I found in the Nikki Old Cornwall Society. So I guess now you have to speak Cornish. So Amisa Navinda Kurnosek. And you know what that means? You know that you speak Cornish. <laughs> oh. Well, somebody's <laughs> waving her hand. Look. Only a little bit. Oh, right. Did I get that right? What did I say? Oh, um, you said something about things in Cornish. <laughs> 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 I know what I said. I said, I can't speak Cornish. <laughs> is, that, is that okay? But you see, I've, I've been doing some voluntary work down at Crescent Kerner, which is the Cornish archive. It's just opened and it's, it's really, really good. And you know, I, I beg you all to go down there because it's really nice and shiny. And um, they, they got to. They got lottery funding for the, 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 the miserable sum of 11.7 million. <laughs> so if any of you ever went to the National Lottery, you know all that money's gone now. It's gone to Red Roof. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, they've they got all the signs up in, in, the, in, the, in the archive, and they're sort of English and Cornish. So I, I know a little bit more Cornish than I used to. <laughs> such, such is life. Anyway, no surfing in New Zealand in Newquay, but the, the Newquay Old Cornwall Society and the Generic Museum there, they, they've got collections of boards of various ages, and they've got a, most of these pictures on this presentation came, came from their archives. They've got a lot of surfing memorabilia, and they, they're hoping to sort of branch out into, into you know, surfing. The, the National Surfing Museum, but there is one, it's in Broughton, in North Devon, in Bid, Bid, by Bidford Bay, yes? So, so we do have a, have a very good museum, but it's not in Cornwall. But hopefully that will change. And, uh, where was I? Maybe, uh, ah yes, surfing competitions. Poster dating from 1969, Constantine Bay, which is Padsco. That's uh, just north up the coast from Newquay itself. That was a poster dating from 1969, Great Britain Surfing Championships. So people have been involved in competitive surfing since the early 1950s. And British surfers have long travelled to new beaches, going on what we call safari, also to enter comp competitions. And they go all over. But there's a sad side to this, and that as a nation, even to the right, where was we? As a nation, even to this day, we're not taken seriously in the surfing world. And um, which is sad because I think I've just proven we're, we're, we've done an awful lot to promote the sport. But this is what you see in sport and heritage. So most of these sports we invented in this country. And if we didn't invent it, stuff like skiing, we promoted it as a sport. If it wasn't for us, then skiing would be something done by, you know, reindeer herders in Norway job still. So 
you know, we, we've done a lot to promote surfing in the world, but we speak, people still think we're amateurs. So that's, uh, we'll probably never get over that one. <laughs> what page is this? I've got pages numbers on me. That's 10. That's 10. So let, let's, um, let's try for 11, shall we? <laughs> Surfers under the environment. But, uh, an introduction to a um, book. You should have been here yesterday. The Roots of British Surfing. The, the author Wilson describes his memory. Of course, the smell is a very evocative to them. Bringing up old memories. He remembers chemicals such as acetone and various things to do with fiberglass. It reminds him of his childhood in his, his father's surfboard workshop. And, uh, you know, Today you wouldn't be allowed to go around sniffing such stuff, I hope. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so the modern surfing industry is trying to get away from things that are not renewables and you know, nasty chemicals and you know, it's uh, just accumulating too many boards, I guess. So there's companies, there's original surfboards, we make the belly boards and the there's another one called traditional surfboards, and they also make wooden surfboards, and the people, are, people are going back to renewable practices. And there's also a charity called Surfers Against Sewage, and they they campaign for campaign for clean up the, up the marine environment. Because I told you a few slides back about the you know the the, the experience surfers surfing the river. There's a vivid description of them having to swim through the sewage outfall to get there. So that, you know, the, 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 the sewage problem in Newquay, they've got a new process in plant and they've got, the, they've got a blue flag beach now and uh, everybody benefits at the end of the day. But, so, but you know, surfers are starting to uh, see themselves in the wider world. Surfing is, surfing is not a sport. Surfing is a lifestyle. It's, it's something that you uh, you believe in, you, you live, and so it has a lot of, uh, you know, obviously heritage connotations, sort of historical connotations, and, uh, you know, sort of identity, you know, uh, identity sort of thing, but it's uh, something that uh, many people can do, and so it, it unites people, and it unites communities. For, the people of Newquay in the beginning was a bit long that people coming from, say, London and places back to surf, and they thought, you know, sort of the beatniks, and there might be a drug problem, and it might be, uh, uh, you know, sort of home to all sorts of surprises. For a while in the late 60s, they even bad band surfing from the beach, because they didn't want their aircraft there. But that, did, that was practically <coughs> unfeasible, because that was a challenge to <coughs> You know, slightly more anarchic personalities, and so that was dropped. I think only lasted a year. Nobody took it seriously, and uh, so uh, you know, surfing nowadays is fully accepted as a, as an activity in UK. Young people do it, and old people do it, and visitors do it, and people go there to live to do it, and uh, people do it in the middle of winter. The only time they don't do it is in when, when there's no surf. And then they get then they get a skateboard and they go to the local skate park. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got uh, you know, I've got another railway picture here. That's uh, I've got a whole load. If you haven't seen half my railway picture, but not much of the matches, you know, some sort of some pretty women in a in a you know, with a with a belly board and these sort of bright vibrant colours and we've got the a typical new key scene with the headlands in the background and there's this little rock sticking up. It's, it's called the island, because it is an island and it's got this little bridge going over and there's a bungalow on the top. Right, so then, and then this is a picture from Jack London's The Cruise of Snark. There's a lot more pictures. You ought to see that book. So, a thank you and happy surfing. Is a read of the bibliography? Right. So Holmes and Wilson, you, you should... You don't need to read it. Sorry, no, it's fine. Oh, right. When I see people nodding... 
it's my oh. fault. I nodded. Um, but we will share the um, PowerPoint online so everybody Bye. can access it. Well, I might send you some more information. I thought that's I perfect. I can't, I can't give you a full form, you know, sort of in 20 page bibliography, just, just a handful. It's lots more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.